the skill we're doing today is urinary catheterization on a female patient. So I've double checked my, my physician's orders. I've come in, I've completed K wipes. And now I'm gonna set up my sterile field and get things ready for the catheterization. The majority of hospitals and facilities have the Foley tray kits, which are very handy. They open at the back. The kit slides directly out. And then this portion, the outer plastic portion of the bag, can act as your garbage receptacle that you can set on the end of your bed. As you'll see, this is already within a drape. So this is your sterile field. So we'll start by taking the end that's away from you, keeping in mind that the one inch portion around the edge of the drape is not sterile. You always wanna do the edge that's away from you first. You never want to reach completely over your sterile field. So now you'll see your supplies. On the top, there will be a drape that will go um, on the bed between the legs of your patient. So now, next step is to get your, your sterile gloves. You'll see the sterile gloves are next on top. To be careful not to touch your sterile field. I also have, you'll notice I also have an extra pair of sterile gloves because inevitably if you don't take an extra, you will need an extra. So you'll notice on the kit, the outside of the gloves say cuff end. So that's the, the side that will open towards you. Place them on the table and then I take the edges, open it up so that you have a flat surface to work from. Again, being careful not to contaminate my other sterile field. Take the inside cuff with my non-dominant hand. And don't worry when you're sterile gloving, if you get two fingers in one of the holes, in one of the glove holes, that can be fixed after you're completely sterile. Then I put my four fingers under the cuff of the other glove, again with hitchhiker thumb. Let's try that one again. So now I'm sterile gloved so I can fix the fact that I have two fingers in one. There we go. And so now here we have a drape. So I'm just gonna take the drape, reach, being careful to reach just on the edge and put it between the legs and the peri area of our patient, keeping in mind that the one inch section around the, the drape is not sterile. So now I remove my, my clean gloves, wash my hands, get your, your sterile gloves, and then I take the edges, open it up so that you have a flat surface to work from. Again, being careful not to contaminate my other sterile field. Take the inside cuff with my non-dominant hand. And don't worry when you're sterile gloving, if you get two fingers in one of the holes, in one of the glove holes, that can be fixed after you're completely sterile. Then I put my four fingers under the cuff of the other glove, again with hitchhiker thumb. Let's try that one again. So now I'm sterile gloved so I can fix the fact that I have two fingers in one. There we go. And so now here we have a drape. So I'm gonna set it to the side. I'm not going to use it right now. In the kit we also have um, the iodine solution. You have a specimen cup which I will put over here because I do not need that right now. 
Um, you also have um, some sterile lubricant to lubricate the catheter. You have tweezers and cotton balls. And you have 10 cc's of sterile saline that will be used to inflate the balloon in the catheter. So what I'll do right now is take our iodine solution. They also use betadine, sometimes hydrogen peroxide, just depending on the patient's allergies. You want to make sure they have no allergies. I'll put that in the garbage. So now that we've put our cleaning solution on the cotton balls, um, we have our sterile lubricant. Remove the cap, throw it in the garbage, and then the lubricant goes in the tray. And we'll put this in the garbage receptacle that we created at the foot of the bed. Then we look at our catheter. This is the part of the catheter that will be inserted into the patient. And there's a balloon on the end. What the balloon does is it keeps the catheter, when it's inflated, it keeps the catheter in the bladder and keeps this from being pulled out. So depending on your facility policy and the manufacturer recommendations, um, you can test the balloon to make sure that it inflates properly. So you inject all 10 cc's of fluid and look, make sure that it inflates, make sure there aren't any holes and it's not leaking and this one is fine. So I'm gonna leave that attached. So after I've deflated the fluids, uh, then I can lubricate the catheter and I'm going to leave the syringe with all the normal um, saline still in it attached to the port so that we can inflate it once the catheter is inserted. So now I'm going to take the, the wrapper off the catheter, throw that in the garbage. And in a female, you want to lubricate one to two inches. Typically, I do two. Um, in a male, it's five to six inches of the catheter. So I put the end of the catheter in the lubricant, keeping in mind I'm still sterile. So now I'm ready to move my, um, my catheter and the prep kit over to our sterile field that we've set up on the patient's bed. I have to have it set up so it's within an inch, so the catheter's not out of my sterile field. Normally you have someone who helps you. There's that part. And then I want my garbage right here. So now with my non-dominant hand, keeping in mind this hand is no longer going to be sterile. This is just clean. I separate the labia. Take one of the cotton balls and take a swipe down the far side of the labia. Throw it in the garbage. Another cotton ball, the side closest to you. Again in the garbage. And then a final one to go straight down the center. So at this point, we've cleaned our patient you're spreading the labia, and you can see the top hole is the urinary meatus, the second hole is the vagina, and then the bottom is the anus. You want to, you want to insert the catheter into the urinary meatus. It's a little bit easier to see on the mannequin. So you want to take the catheter, holding it about three inches from the tip, and insert it into the urinary meatus. And soon, about this time, I should see urine flow coming back into the catheter tube. And at that point, once I see the urine flow, I insert it another two inches, but you can check your policy, your facility policy on that. Um, then I brace it with my non-dominant clean hand, and I inflate the balloon of the catheter with full 10 cc's of water. Throw my equipment away. 
and then I attach to the patient's leg. This is a stat lock. It can lock your Foley catheter tube in place. Not all facilities have them, but they're very handy. So what you want to do is attach the Foley tubes into the stat lock, and then it's secured. If your facility doesn't have the stat locks, um, Foley fasteners, then um, you can use tape on the patient's leg as well as extra tape on the top to secure the Foley catheter. Then we hang the Foley hook on the bag to a non-movable portion of the bed. We make our patient comfortable again and we document our procedure.